All right, so it's the healer's time to be judged. What did Blizzard do to fix these specs? I'll be looking particularly into what major problems did these specs have in Mythic Plus that prevented them from being, you know, at the top to being close to even touching Resto Druid. And what did Blizzard do to fix this? Has it actually been fixed? Uh, like for the tank rankings, I'll be looking into both of their respective strengths compared to one another, as well as how they have changed compared to BFA, for better or for worse. Now, as always, remember that this is still numbers tuning phase. Don't put too much importance in the current BFA state of specs as well because every spec of any role will feel much worse at Shadowlands launch purely because of the absolute destruction of all your secondary stats as well as being just at the infancy of all your borrowed powers ramping up in Shadowlands after losing all of your powers from BFA so it will feel worse even if you hear anyone saying that oh yeah this spec is now feeling great yeah you will still have to wait a while until you can feel it properly. Now first we're gonna be pulling a reverse here because you see Blizzard devs in charge of Mistweaver, this is how you do a mastery. A percentage heal increase based on how many restoration hots you have on the target. And the heal percentage affects every single heal you put on the target, unlike Mistweaver that has a mastery that only interacts with three of his main abilities. This makes mastery extremely good for Druid and scaling incredibly well into the expansion. Druid overall is broken OP. I'm sorry to give you guys bad news, but if you were hoping for a toning down of Druid in Shadowlands, Druid is actually getting buffed. It is the most buffed healer in Shadowlands, at the very least regarding Mythic plus. For starters, Ferocious Bite is now baseline and Feral Affinity now gives you Maim, which is a stun, and Balance Affinity gives you Typhoon for free, taken away from the talents. Typhoon not being on a talent tree frees up a spot for Heart of the Wild, coming back. 45 seconds long of a gigantic DPS boost. Huge DPS boost, 30% more damage to your Feral and Balance Affinities, as well as double combo point generation and instant star surge. And this is in a row with Mass Entanglement and Mighty Bash, so you are not losing healing throughput to pick Heart of the Wild, which is insanely OP. As far as utility, on top of Typhoon, Cyclone is now back baseline. Stampeding Roar for Resto Druid is now back baseline. You have Nature Swiftness to make your next heal instant, your next ability instant, even Battle Rest and Mass Entanglement you can use it on. Iron Bark has now been cooked into the talent that has been removed, and now Iron Bark also increases the healing of your hots on the iron bark target by 20 percent covenant unlike what you're about to see for other healers are now extremely good adaptive swarm is an hot that triggers your mastery and on top of that it also increases the hot's on the target by another 20 percent it has a 12 second duration with a 25 second cd which means 50 percent uptime that is insane ravenous frenzy is another good dps cooldown because it increases your healing damage and haste stacking it's a little bit on the weak side given the three minute cooldown Kindred Spirits is another very good single target covenant. 10 seconds of basically Beacon of Light that you can put on your tank every 60 seconds. As this wasn't enough, Battle Rest is now removed from engineering, making Resto Druid the only Battle Rest healer in the game. Are you depressed already? No? Okay, legendaries then. They are extremely good and versatile. You can choose from being able to use two life blooms now, which is incredibly strong with the photosynthesis talent, your wild growth can have a 25% chance to make your next rejuve or regrowth be cast on three targets, you, you can have 25% faster ticking dots and 15% faster ticking hots, this is another buff to your damage. Overall, it's just a no contest, it's just incredible utility, free damage buffs, new baseline abilities, uh, especially the heart of the wild returning, it's just a 10 out of 10 compared to BFA and 10 out of 10 compared to all other healers. So now, Resto Shaman. What I mentioned at the start is that I would have been looking into what problems did the specs have in BFA that prevented them from being, you know, flavor of the month, from being OP, from being super good. Well, the problem of Resto Shaman is that they have um, trouble with single target healing, as well as good damage reduction or simply good single target tank cooldowns. Now, Resto Shaman has been massively buffed when it comes to single target. They have been given Earth Shield as a baseline, so that's a free 10% single target healing on your tank. And you now also have a Soul Bind, which gives you an extra 5% effect to your Earth Shield. And at rank 14 of Renown, it will be plus 12. So this totals plus 22% extra healing on your Earth Shield target. To compound on this, the main basic abilities of Resto Shaman have all been massively buffed. Healing Rain, Healing Wave, Healing Surge and Chain Heal. I'm talking about massively. Healing Wave went from 170% spell power to 325. It heals for twice as much as a Holy Paladin's Holy Light for about the same mana and cast time. Healing Surge is twice as good as Flash of Light from a Paladin. 
huge buffs also from damage. They have been slightly nerfed in the beta because they were doing insane damage, but Chain Lightning, Lava Burst and Lightning Bolt have all been massively buffed. Shaman still retains a gigantic amount of utility. Purge, the only healer with an interrupt. Spirit Link Totem, Ancestral Protection Totem, Wind Rush Totem, Tremor Totem, Stun Totem, Self Battle Rest. For damage reductions and single target CDs, where you would have looked at at this point would have been Covenants. Their talents have been mostly unchanged, so What's there? Well, unfortunately for Resto Shaman, all of your covenants are AOE themed. I know, it sucks. You already have good AOE, you don't care about AOE, and all you have from covenants is just more AOE. So overall, I know it's not that cool to hear someone who is excited about his class. Hey, have they buffed Resto? Is it good now? Oh yeah, man, it's gotten good improvements. Yeah, like what? Oh, nothing, they just heal for more. Yeah, it's a little bit boring. No new talents, no new shiny things, but the basic have all been buffed, though. So it's just a, a flat buff. It might not be exciting, but I am not sure if it's actually going to fully fix the single target problems that Shaman has, because you're still tied to hard casting all of these buffed spells. You still have problems of while on the move. I'm not sure if this is going to be enough to fix the problems with Resto Shaman. They still don't have a very strong CD for their tank. Spirit Link Totem is just one, and it's more like raid-wide, or group-wide in this case. But these very strong, you know, basic buffs alone make it, at the very least, an improvement. So overall, it's an 8 out of 10 compared to BFA. As boring as it might be, it's still an improvement. And a 7 out of 10 compared to other healers. So oh, now Holy Priest. Alright, immediately. What were the problems of Holy Priest in BFA class? Why weren't they being used as much as all the other specs in uh, Mythic Plus? They have fuck all for damage reduction, they have very little AoE CDs, they have low DPS and they have low utility. Some of the things they have gotten as an improvement, Power Infusion is now baseline, Circle of Healing is now baseline and Prayer of Mending is now instant. This is particularly good because now Circle of Healing and Prayer of Mending are two abilities you can use on the move. Holy Priest is rather slow and immobile, so this is very good. Now, first problem, Covenant seems to be made with Discipline in mind. There is a bunch of Covenants that do damage and healing, which benefits Discipline Priest because of Atonement, so Discipline gets to double dip on the effect. They get both the effect of the healing and of the healing they get from the damage they do, but Holy Priest doesn't, so they're just inherently weaker, and none of them are particularly showing the problems of single target. And one of the covenants that could help Holy Priest is Boon of the Ascended. And guess what? Boon of the Ascended creates a massive AoE at the end of the duration based on your Smite usage. Guess who uses Smite? It's Discipline Priest, so that's weak on the on this side of Holy for Covenants. Single target remains pretty strong. Between Mastery, your Renew, your Prayer of Mending, and all of that passive healing, plus your Holy Ward Serenity, and the new Legendary, Measured Contemplation, that can make it even stronger. The problem is still the AoE. You can hot people around, but you're not a Resto Druid. You can use Circle of Healing, but you're not using Wild Growth. You can use Prayer of Healing, but you're not using Chain Heal. I mean, look at this shit. They have horrendous AoE CDs, even going into talents. They are just raid-wide, they're not good enough for Mythic Plus. Guardian Angel just compounds on what you already have, and you are good at, which is single target. And you are left with the absolute memes that are Divine Hymn and Hymn of Hope, basically being a cack for other healers in raids. But for Mythic Plus, they do nothing. Legendaries are not gonna bail you out of this. Harmonious Apparatus is giving you a flat 16 and 12 second cooldowns to your two healing wards. Divine Image could be very very good because you can take the opportunity of using your single target and DPS Holy Wards into spawning a minion that you can then use to duplicate to help you with using your AoE abilities, but right now he is garbage. <laughs> It doesn't really help at all, it's fucking terrible. The DPS is still a problem. The unpruning of abilities has been essentially irrelevant. Shadow War Pain, Shadow War Death, Mind Blast, they do nothing to your DPS. You're still shit because you have no synergy with your talents to do DPS, so it's useless. And your utility is still weak. Mind Soothe, Mind Control are not that good. Uh, Shackle, Undead has been improved simply because of the amount of Undead that they're gonna be in the new dungeons, but that's about it. You know, you're not that strong in utility either. You still have the problem of not having a proper defense offensive for yourself. You don't want to use Guardian Angel on yourself. <laughs> you don't really have anything else. So overall it's a 7 out of 10 compared to BFA purely because of Circle of Healing, Power Infusion and uh, Power of Mending Instant basically. And uh, 6 out of 10 compared to the other healers. Question class. What were the problems of Discipline Priest in BFA? Bad reactive single target healing, bad defensives and low utility. Whoever answered this gets 3 points. So low utility already mentioned in Holy. They have Mind Soothe, Mind Control, 
a leap of faith and shackle on dead it's just very very basic it's the, the weakest of all healers when it comes to utility when it comes to defensives again weakest of all healers they have desperate prayer which is garbage and they only have uh, pain suppression and being on such a wheelchair that you have to pain suppress yourself and cuck your tank of an external is just unviable in Nike's. It's unacceptable. On top of that, for some reason, Holy and Discipline are the only two healer healers that have no access to a defensive talent tree line of any kind. They have no way to improve on their defensives. But these two remain problems, absolutely. Utility and defensives. Now, when it comes to single target, what has been done to improve this problem? Discipline Priest only functions in preventing damage and absorbing damage. Once the damage is through, Discipline Priest has a massive problem trying to bring the target back up. They are forced to essentially abandon their identity, which is Atonement, and run to the cuck shed of spamming Shadowmend and desperately trying to keep the tank alive. They can only react with long cooldowns like Rapture, Shield Spam, you know, Barrier or Pain Suppression. And that's it. That's all. They might be helped in a weird twist of fate with the return of Spirit Shell. Spirit Shell is no longer the broken OP raid healing tool from Mists, because in Mists, Discipline Priest had Prayer of Healing, so you could carpet bomb the entire raid with absorbs, but now you can't. Mythic Plus situation now much better because you have a very easy time putting a tournament on all, on all your party and absorbing damage, and you can use it on your tank as well. But this is still an AoE talent. It can help you with single target, but it's not just what priest needed. You can get help from legendaries, because measured contemplation now supercharges your Shadowmend, making it at 3 stacks, or 45 seconds of wait time, almost as good as Holy War Serenity, and at 4 stacks, or 1 minute of wait time, it makes it heal even more than Holy War Serenity. So this is a big help. Covenants, unfortunately, are also mostly AoE. Kyrian is absolutely broken OP, especially for raid healing, even after getting nerfed. It charges the AoE heal with your smite, and you being a Discipline Priest have no problems using smite. Ventir is actually good for single target healing, but it only works on the damage done by one target. If there is a heavy hitting target on Mythic Plus, it's okay, but when the tank pulls 8 mobs, it doesn't do much. The Necrolord as a whole seems to be the, the better one. Unholy Nova is on a 1 minute CD, and I, as I mentioned already, Discipline Priest can double dip. They can gain the healing from the, the base heal and they can gain the healing from the damage Unholy Nova does because we have Atonement and Unholy Nova works with Atonement. On top of that Necrolord is the only Covenant with a defensive Flashcraft which is going to be invaluable in high mythic plus keys when Discipline Priest is just getting one shot by things because they have no defensive. So overall it's a 7 out of 10 compared to BFA because it has been effectively improved in several things but I still think that the single target problem is still there and an 8.5 out of 10 compared to other healers. Moving on to Holy Paladin. Paladin now works with Holy Power, all their specs, your Holy Shock, Retether Strike, Hammer of Wrath and your Flash of Light and Holy Light on a beacon target are going to be generating Holy Power and your Word of Glory, Light of Dawn and Shield of the Righteous are gonna spend it. Now the big difference is that of course Glimmer is now a talent, it's no longer a trait. Resetter Strike now costs mana as much as Holy Shock. One of the benefits of BFA's Paladin was the fact that playing around Glimmer made you have infinite mana because your main generator of Holy Shock was Resetter Strike, something that did not cost mana. It now seems that Blizzard is pushing towards two different playstyles, one with your essentially your melee Resetter Strike and Crusader's Might around Glimmer of Light and another one around generating Holy Power with your old school boomer hard cast abilities. Unfortunately this latter one is absolute garbage, mostly because it is far too complicated to generate as much holy power with your flash of light and holy light, because they are tied exclusively to healing the beacon. As your beacon allows you to duplicate a heal for 50% effectiveness on your beacon targets, but now holy power wants you to directly heal the beacon, essentially losing the duplicated heal. This is stupid and pointless, is going to make this entire attempt at convincing paladins to not play glimmer not work. Even if you take something like beacon of virtue, it's just still not enough. The only benefit of this, the only benefit of this is that you can now beacon yourself or beacon someone else pre-pull, pre-combat, heal yourself and get to max holy power before actually entering combat. That's just about the only cool thing you can do. Legendaries do not overly focus on glimmer functionality, just shock barrier 
has a holy shock enabler but all, all of the other legendaries all of the other legendaries are more tuned towards all around healing and not glimmer and holy shock you're still doing okay in aoe and only becoming very good when you have your cds set up and your glimmer set up otherwise you can still you know lag a little bit behind you are now an even better single target healer thanks to the word of glory rework slash addition and you still have extremely high dps and you still keep all of your good utilities you know your blessings your leonans your aura mastery your freedom your sacrifice your personal bubble your your defensive damage reduction cooldown compared to bfa all the power system is much better for scaling you're not gated by cooldowns as a matter of fact i'll Ready, you can generate a massive amount of holy power you are improved across the board back in bfa glimmer was so retarded that paladins were basically ignoring 80 percent of their kit because they, it was just a waste of a gcd now even when you play glimmer you are encouraged in fact you sh you should use word of glory and light of dawn as your spenders you shouldn't just ignore them glimmer yes loses all of the borrowed power opiness from bfa from ineffable truth to all the essences but it's still very good so overall paladins an 8 out of 10 compared to bfa and an 8 and a half out of 10 compared to the other healers so looks like we have left the best for last mistweaver monk now class can you tell me what were the problems of mistweaver monk in bfa mythic plus yes correct five points to gryffindor they had shit aoe healing they had shit healing on the move bad damage reductions and big cooldowns and they had low dps the problem of monk remains their mastery they have a mastery that only affects vivify enveloping mist and renewing mist basically no revival no yulon no rising mist talent for fist weaving no first application of essence font and no borrowed power all of the healing that could come from azerite essences trinkets legendaries covenants and soul binds none of that is going to work with your mastery this makes it a dead stat which is already terrible mistweaver has gotten um invoke chiji now baseline renamed as invoke yulon as an extra big cd which right now is pretty weak but we can supersede that since you know number tuning they still have unparalleled single target healing they're still extremely good in single target healing they have one of the best single target cds in life cocoon but the aoe and the movement healing is still terrible essence font is a garbage healing ability for aoe and the rest of your aoe is still tied to your renewing mists is tied to your vivify healing all targets affected by renewing mists the problem is on average you will only have renewing mists out on two targets you have to start using thunder focus t to empower your next renewing mist and increase the duration by 10 seconds or even talent into focus thunder to make your next two abilities after thunder focus t be empowered so you can empower two renewing mist and you can have four of them out but this requires at least like 18 seconds of prep time just to get to heal four people with vivify compare this to to like glimmer healing to chain heal to rejuvenation carpet healing and wild growth atonement healing circle of healing prayer of healing monk just has too many troubles healing multiple people okay then let's get help from covenants and legendaries no Covenants don't help. All abilities are either buffs from the Covenant or they are single target heals and they don't fix your AOE problems. Okay then, fine, legendaries. The only legendary that has some use, could have had some use, was Tear of Mourning. The problem is that the buff is created by using Renewing Mist. The ability you already have problems spreading out in the first place. So this doesn't increase your, your AOE targets, it only increases your AOE power on two or three targets. But what you wanted was being able to AOE four to five targets. So this doesn't really solve the problems. The, the, the healing steroids you can get, the free casts you can get by channeling Soothing Mist is also the massive crack of movement. Whenever you stop channeling Soothing Mist and you have to move, you are literally on a wheelchair, which is unacceptable for a class supposedly as mobile as a monk. You are, you are just too useless when you are moving as a monk and there is nothing that can counteract this. If you compound all of these problems with the fact that they already have very low DPS and nothing has been done to improve the DPS of the monk, as well as the fact that they have no huge AOE abilities or damage reduction abilities, revival is still very poor. So when you, com when you combine all of this, it's like a 6 out of 10 compared to BFA because there has basically been no major change really and a 5.5 out of 10 compared to other healers. And so this concludes my dissertation on healers. I have to say, compared to tanks, I feel like there is a little bit more optimism towards how some of the healers can improve on their weaknesses in BFA, particularly the single target problems of Shaman and the single target problems of Disc Priest and the AoE problems of um, Holy Priest. There is, you know, a little bit more optimism compared to the tanks. You know, the Warrior, the Guardian Druid and the Vengeance Demon Hunter. Now. As always, I'm gonna tell you something that nobody ever listens to. Uh, play what you like, play what you enjoy, don't play what's OP. 
and what you think is gonna be the flavor of the month. Yeah, I know. Nobody's gonna listen to me. You're just gonna ignore me and play whatever's OP, blah, blah, blah. Fuck you guys.